Thank you for joining us on The Power of You, your resource for expanding your own potential. All of us have the power to change our lives. Every human being has the ability to create the life of their dreams. With my host, Jason Barrow, we will give you the tools to access that power. Joining us is Lawrence Edwards. He has a PhD in Psychoeducational Processes Clinical Psychology Track also a licensed mental health counselor. And in 1997, he began practicing biofeedback and neurofeedback. He is on the faculty of New York Medical College as a clinical instructor in the Department of Community and Preventative Medicine. He's also certified in hypnosis and has taught meditation internationally for over 35 years. He has an extensive background in yoga, meditation, and the dynamics of Kundalini. Lawrence is a frequent lecture lecturer of altered states of consciousness. He has helped people from all walks of life, including prisoners, post-traumatic stress victims, and New York survivors of 9-11. Wow, <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome, yeah. Lawrence. Thank you. Knowing that there is power of potential inside of everyone, what do you think is the, the first steps in beginning to open up to discover a way to channel yourself in the right direction to feel better, whether you have stress or a trauma? You know, is there something that we can do that opens us up more to it? Well, the, probably the very first thing uh, is you acknowledge that you have this inner capacity uh, and you have some at least willingness to believe or pursue uh, with some degree of maybe it's possible that I could really, I could heal, I could change, I could get beyond this uh, state of stress. And then it's remarkably simple the initial steps of what a person can do. I mean, just finding a, a quieter environment, just be doing some very simple practices of resting there, closing your eyes, beginning to just feel your breath, allowing it to slow and deepen. These just, the, the simplest of steps mm -hmm. uh, will already begin to open the door to being able to know who you are beyond your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. are not your mind, you're not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can just breathe and step back from them, we can begin to have an entirely different perspective. Mm -hmm. Once that happens and you sit like that for a while, you begin to discover there's an extraordinary spaciousness within which all these thoughts and feelings and things arise and subside. But now you've got a very different way of looking at them rather than becoming them. Mm -hmm. That your reality doesn't collapse around each thought, each feeling as it comes and goes. Yeah, like your sense of self becomes a new constant outside of all the events yeah, in the day. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you are not, I like that, you are not your thoughts and you are not your mind. It's more like you are an awareness of it. So if you, you have could, thoughts and you have a mind, but they right. do not define right. the and whole it, of you. And as soon as you recognize them, you're stepping out of them. You're right. detaching from them and becoming the awareness that creates the space that right. can allow healing and right. allow potential and growth to come right. in. And then you can be curious. You can be curious about, mm -hmm. like who that. am I beyond the mind? If I say I have a mind, who's the me that has a mind? <laughs> I say I have thoughts, who's the me who has thoughts? If, if a prisoner in a iron and steel uh, federal penitentiary can have experiences such that they've told me that they feel freer than they ever have in their entire life. Wow, One inmate behind bars? Behind bars. One inmate who told me if the only way for them to have learned these kinds of simple meditative practices was to have gone to prison to meet someone like me and to learn this, it would have been worth it. Could you tell us something about how you got started in such an interesting field? I mean, what, what uh, drove you to be involved in, in uh, this practice? Well, uh, I had some very interesting experiences early, early on in my life uh, where I had experiences of a sense of a divine presence. Uh, even at three and four years old. Mm. And I used to talk to my parents about this this divine presence. And they would go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you were three or four, what did you yeah. call it then? <laughs> uh, I called her the Lady of Light. Oh, and wow. I used to talk about the Lady of And all mm -hmm. the way into my teens, my parents would go, oh, yeah, the Lady of Light. Uh, and then she reappeared when I started doing meditation practices when I was about 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I pursued it deeply. and. Uh, wound up going to India, spending some years training to become a monk, wow. uh, spending years in an ashram, a monastery-like uh, setting, and doing very intensive practices for many years. 
Wow. Uh, and then also wound up integrating that into uh, psychological training that I did and professional training so that I really saw that, that uh, our Western traditions and where psychology, transpersonal psychology, even biofeedback and neurofeedback were going, uh, gives us a language and a context for being able to translate some of these ancient practices. An interface with practices. some of these old inter yeah. and old traditions. Right, yeah. the ancient wisdom traditions. Now we can see, oh, we can make use of them in ways that our Western culture can appreciate. Mm. Uh, and that even some of the technologies we have developed through biofeedback can assist people learning these more quickly. Wow. I think I'd like to know what, what your most recent projects are and, and uh, tell us something about what you're up to. The power of meditation uh, in order to give us access as a set of practices, <clears throat> meditation allows us to experience uh, w what's our nature beyond our ordinary mind. Mm -hmm. And with that, the opening of powers of intuition, mm -hmm. uh, powers of knowing, uh, and be able to bring uh, a kind of clarity and skill to living. And with that, a real way to be able to heal and get beyond suffering of ordinary life. Uh, bringing those kinds of practices into as many kinds of settings as possible is what I've been about. So that's why I've, been, I've taught in federal penitentiaries, state penitentiaries, universities, hospitals, schools, uh, any place that we can bring those kinds of teachings and practices. So most recently I've been working on some projects of teaching uh, teachers in oh. elementary, middle school, and high schools. Wow, what a great place to do this kind right. of work. In order to teach them about simple, basic meditation practices that can make a difference for themselves and that they can pass on to students who are so stressed out. I mean, our educational system is so demanding. And I can think of some suffer. teachers in my past that I wish were, knew you more, better. Yeah. <laughs> so bring, bring those kind of practices into that kind of environment and then, you know, the power of those practices and really the power of what's our higher mind, our, our innate uh, self, it, then it becomes more and more available to people. So pursuing those kinds of things. So your long list of credentials has a lot to do with trying to get it dispersed as, as effectively as possible, it sounds like. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and part of uh, what came out of that was right after the 9-11 tragedy, uh, I started a nonprofit organization for teaching meditation uh, from a variety of different traditions, because many traditions have excellent practices. It's not that there's just one has a monopoly on that by any means. Good. And so Anamkara, and Anamkara is an ancient Gaelic Celtic term, means friend of the soul. So wow. Anamkara is the name of this organization, and we bring really highly qualified teachers. Some have come from India, from uh, uh, Bhutan. We had a, a great master of the Buddhist tradition who, in fact, the Dalai Lama had brought over. Mm -hmm. We I had become friends with him, and, and he came over and offered teachings, as well as teachings and uh, everything from courses to uh, retreats that I offer through that organization as well. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. The logistics and just in trying to get so many things accomplished is just impressive. Well, uh, you know, I think it's when you make that kind of offering, things come together yeah. to support that. First, acknowledge that you have the power to change. You have the power to heal, to remove stress, and truly grow in your life. You can do this by creating a better environment in yourself by using the simple practice of relaxation and focused breathing. Begin to quiet the mind. Be an observer of the thoughts. Begin to know who you are beyond your thoughts. Be curious. Who am I? Try not to fill in the answers with your roles, wife, husband, mother, teacher, etc. Go beyond your duties, beyond your thoughts, and find the true power within. There will be answers waiting for you there. And when you make decisions to better yourself, things just come together and get you moving in the right direction. There are many different techniques and styles of meditation and yoga that can help you continue your evolution of your experience here as the power of you.